And in ritual is like a superhero's way of thinking about your habits or your patterns, right? So what are those choices that you're making every single day that are going to like be little bulbs on a Christmas tree? So at the end of the day, you know, your Christmas tree is all lit up. Welcome to the Myers Detox Podcast. I'm Dr. Wendy Myers. And on this show, we talk about everything related to heavy metal and chemical toxicity and the health issues caused by these toxins. We talk about anti-aging, we talk about bioenergetics and advanced topics in health. And today my guest is Jana Danielson, and we're going to be talking about the vitality code, cracking mindset, movement, and metabolism wellness, because it, it's really shocking. 93% of people have issues with their metabolism. They, um, I don't want to say metabolically broken, um, but they have, you know, they have issues, they have challenges with their metabolism, with their blood sugar, and with their weight, et cetera. And so it's really important to try to get every tool, use every tool that you can to work on your metabolism. We talk about a lot of strategies on the show today using mindset um, of some tools that you can use to kind of set little goals, like maybe choose three things that you, you need to do, the lo lowest hanging fruit. Uh, we talk about, um, you know, going on walks for 10 minutes after, you know, lunch and dinner after almost every meal. Uh, I talk about using a continuous glucose monitor and how, for me, that's helped change my behavior in my eating patterns and when I eat so much to really give me a lot of insights and clues into my metabolism as well and, and to, you know, to help to fix that. Jana Danielson, uh, she's an award-winning wellness entrepreneur who transformed her personal struggle with physical pain into a mission to elevate women through self-love and empowerment. And as founder and CEO of Bloom Better, she helps uh, women discover their sacred selves by integrating physical wellness with mental and emotional health, focusing on mastering mindset, movement, and metabolism. Jana is a Pilates master instructor, an Amazon international bestselling author, and Jana created the Cooch Ball, the world's first pelvic floor fitness tool for women. And she also founded Lead Pilates and Lead Integrated Health Therapies. Uh, Jana is also a member of the Holistic Leadership Council and recipient of the 2023 Mindshare Leadership Summit Future of Health Award. And having coached hundreds of thousands of women globally, Jana continues to inspire and guide them towards enhanced quality of life, confidence, and impact. And her work proves that when women invest in their health, they invest in the power to change. You can learn more about Jana and her amazing line of supplements at bloombetter.life. Jana, thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, Dr. Wendy, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited for our conversation. Yeah, so, so tell us a little bit about your yourself, your history, and how you got into the health industry. Yeah, well, you know, I was like corporate track as a young woman in the mid 90s, finishing my business degree, and then my master's in business, I was going to like bust through the glass ceiling in like fill in the blank corporation. And, you know, blaze a trail for other women in executive leadership development and the corporate world. And um, there was another plan for me. And so by the age of 21 years old, I was actually on 11 different medications a day. And what started out as what I thought was just a stomach ache in my late teens, by 21 years old, li like literally the pa pain succumbed me. I went to bed looking at the 11 prescription med bottles on my nightstand and I woke up to that same, those same 11. And what I didn't realize then was how that simple act of going to bed and waking up and that being the first thing that I was seeing was completely shifting my body's ability to remember that it could be healthy, that it could heal. And so I uh, was told by my doctor that the pain was in my head and I was seeking attention. Six months later, I went to my first Pilates mat class. And four months after that first Pilates class, I was off all 11 medications, had no idea. Like I just thought I would like throw salt over my shoulder and I would make sure not to walk under a ladder because I thought it was just a fluke. And I didn't understand how what four years of medical tests and protocols did not do my body actually healed on its own in 16 weeks. It, it made no sense, but I had this huge curiosity as to what was going on in my body. 
and shifted from the corporate world to wellness entrepreneurship. And that was almost 30 years ago. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your your company that you founded, Bloom Better? Yeah. So you know what? Bloom Better is the latest evolution of myself. What started off as getting certified to teach Pilates. And at the at that point, it was kind of like a Jana, you have an MBA. Why are you getting a Pilates certification? Like a lot of people around me were questioning why I was leaving this career uh, that was very ego driven to something in the in the health and as like teaching Pilates. You can just anybody can teach Pilates, right? But you know what, Wendy, that really like spurred this passion in me because what I found through teaching Pilates out of my home, opening up my first commercial Pilates studio, then expanding into an integrated health therapies clinic, grew that to a team of 60 clinicians, administrators, and instructors, fell in love with pelvic floor health, created the cooch ball for women to help them understand that our bodies are meant to you know, have babies and, and, and have emotion and be able to, you know, heal from that and move forward. Bloom Better is where I landed because I realized that three specific pillars of health, mindset, movement, and metabolism or metabolic health, really, when you bring them together and you understand how they kind of leapfrog off each other, And when you change your frame of reference and your set of lenses around this body, when I was 21 years old, I actually hated my body. I use that word and I don't like that word, but I hated everything about it because I spent my whole teens and 20s hating my body. It it was such an unbelievable, sad waste of time and energy. You're and, right. just, and it's unbelievable how you like look back. I'm like, I, I had a supermodel body. Like, what? Yes. why did I hate my body so much? And yeah. I wanted to cut it up and do plastic surgery. And it, it's it's really sad. It's so important to teach, I think, mindset skills to young women at a younger, younger ages. Well, and that's what it is. And it's understanding that, you know, if we if we live in these silos, like, Yes, I do my meditation. Oh, yeah. Now I go and I do my yoga class or my spin class. And oh, yeah, now I make sure I'm, you know, taking, making sure I get my, you know, my vitamin C and making sure that I'm taking my collagen. Like when we do these things in isolation, they do have the ability to move your health forward so that we can, what is the latest, like, I think it was in 2022, the latest research said that in North America, 93% of us are metabolically unhealthy. So we can be doing these pieces to move us forward and get out of that 93%. But what Bloom Better is all about is when you bring these beautiful pillars together, like the three strands of a braided, you know, of of a braid in your hair, the body will respond in a a beautifully magical way. And that's really the heart and soul. I feel like my purpose is to elevate women by showing them the path to self-love and empowerment and it's through mindset, movement, and metabolic health that I'm doing that. Yeah. And let's talk about uh, when you say mindset, what are kind of your mm-hmm. strategies? Because I know for me, it's become more and more important to not say or think or write negative things, especially when it comes to my health and to my body. Because I think it's so easy for women to fall into this, oh, God, I'm so fat. Like, nothing I'm doing is working. The scale isn't moving. You know, I'm too fat. I'm too heavy. And to repeat that over and over, and your body is listening to that. Your body is listening to you. You know, I think you have to flip that and say, "I'm so thankful uh, that I'm I'm improving in my health, and I'm I'm getting thinner and thinner, or I'm getting more healthy, or whatever the the positive messages are." Is to be thankful and grateful for what you're trying to accomplish and move towards. And it's it's such a practice. It really is challenging, even if you're mindful of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and you know what I what I root into is some of the work by Dr. Joe Dispenza, right? He says we would rather live in our familiar past than the unfamiliar future. And so of the 60 to 70,000 thoughts we have in a day, 80 to 90% of them are the same as they were yesterday, last week, last month, last year. So we as women, we crave this change, right? We might we might think, "Oh, it's my birthday. Now I'm going to I'm going to shift things, right? I'm going to clean out my fridge, I'm going to get myself a new pair of runners or oh, it's January 1st, it's time to get my my resolutions out there and become a different person. But yet our thoughts are the same as they were 80% of them, like for the, you know, the last decade or more. So how can we anticipate a change or expect a change 
when we're still living in as that as that past version of us. And so what I started doing is looking at, well, what is mindset and how does it work with emotional intelligence and how do we get in touch with our with our emotions? And a friend of mine, Christy Holt, who owns a company in Utah called Vibonics, she was doing this crazy research using voice recognition. So you take a 15 second voice sampling and they created this AI algorithm. Christy used to be in the world of um, like solar energy. That's what she used to do. And she questioned like, if we can take energy from the sun and harness it and, you know, power our homes. And if, if emotion is truly energy in motion, what if we could learn more about that, what would that do for us? How would it power our body differently? How would our posture show up? How would our metabolism show up? How would our lymphatic system show up if we were of a mindset that was dialed into those expansive emotions? Because it's one thing, and I think, Wendy, you would agree, it's one thing to do your affirmations and your mantras like, you know, I am abundantly healthy, I'm abundantly healthy. But if the voices in your head are, your jeans aren't zipping up anymore. We have to make sure we buy a bigger tunic. Like if if those two don't match, um, the head is always, always, always going to kind of trump what's going on in the rest of the body. So you might go to the grocery store line and, you know, the clerk says, how's your day? And you might go like, I'm having a great day. And inside your cortisol is pumping, your stomach is hurting, you're in this protection posture and there's nothing that your body's like, you're lying. You're not okay. Look at, for all of these reasons, you're not okay. And so what I started, you know, learning and training with Christy is that how can we become aware of our emotions? And that then led me to the work of Dr. David R. Hawkins, the scale of consciousness, like knowing that shame is the lowest frequency emotion on this planet and then I brought in my pelvic floor world, like the pudendal nerve is the main nerve that runs from our brain to our pelvic floor in a man's body and a woman's body. It's a motor nerve, so it sends messages, and it is a sensory nerve, so it sends sensations. And this is how like this all kind of has come together. The Latin root of the word pudendal, if you were to Google it, means an area of shame. So we are born into this body, onto this planet with the frequency and energy of shame in through the pelvic floor, which is the sacral chakra, which is our creativity, our sensuality. And now we know from David R. Hawkins that that is the lowest frequency emotion that we have on this planet. It should be no surprise that we have a almost $20 billion incontinence product industry because women don't want to talk about this. We would rather mask it but we then we have research that says that 90% of pelvic floor dysfunction is br proper breathing, proper posture, and simple blood flow. So this is, again, where, you know, mindset is not just journaling. It's not just affirming. It's not just meditating. But it's believing in that future version of yourself. Like, these things have already happened. I am living my most healthy abundant, beautifully energetic life. And if I say that, and if I do things like make sure that I'm drinking my water and every hour get up for two minutes, so the 50% decrease to blood flow to my legs is negated, I really am loving that future version of myself. So that's where I love to take, you know, my community on this journey is that go beyond the words right now, because if you're not embodying those words, that's all they simply are, are words. Yeah, I think it's really important. I have like a little cheat sheet that I have. If I start to go into negative Nancy mode or whatever, you just have a bad night of sleep or you're just, you know, you just can't, you know, switch. Um, I have a little cheat sheet where I have like a huge list of health, personal business um, goals, but I... I'm thankful like they've already happened. I said, yes. every night before I go to bed, I say, thank you so much uh, for that I've had two hours of REM sleep and two hours of deep sleep. And so I'm thankful like as it has already happened or like it already happened. And for me, that has been so instrumental in switching and in, in retraining my brain 
and uh, creating a practice or it's not just around positivity it literally will switch my mood uh -huh. um and it's almost like you know i'm essentially going into prayer um essentially and um thanking my creator for and uh, you know having already created what what it is that i want to 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 do in my life or create my life and so that's been incredibly powerful for me so for anyone listening that really wants to detox their body go to heavymetalsquiz.com i created a quiz for you it only takes a couple of seconds based on some lifestyle questions you can get your toxicity score and get a free video series that answers all of your frequently asked questions about how to detox your body. Check it out, heavymetalsquiz.com. I, and you know, that's exactly, even when I get on an airplane, right? That little prayer, like, thank you, Lord, for a smooth flight. Thank you for the feeling of my feet back on the ground. Like I'm already, like, I'm already at my destination point, right? So you bring up a really good point that it's that future pacing um, you know, I read once that the brain doesn't discern between success and gratitude. So having that gratitude that, you know, that, that prayerfulness, that thankfulness really is, you know, a, a, a super basic hack for starting to shift your state. Because as you know, there are so many opportunities to like, sometimes I compare, um, you know, people's energy to the characters in Winnie the Pooh. And it's so easy to be Eeyore, right? Like to be that, well, it's sunny now, but there's two clouds in the sky, right? So it might rain later and it is so easy to fall into that trap. And like you said, the, the body listens like right down to like the mitochondria, you know, in our cells that power our body, they are listening. So it's important to understand how you know, reframes and that future pacing of your gratitude and your prayer, what an impact that it can have on your life. Yeah, because I think it's so counterproductive if you're doing all this stuff to improve your health, so improve your metabolic health, lose weight, and and do all these different things we do for our health. But yet, for the most part, you're you're sabotaging yourself with your mindset. Like you, you've got to work on the mindset too, you know, and not well, beat yourself up. When you make a exactly. mistake or you eat a bad meal or your impulses yeah. get the better of you or and it's just so easy to just beat yourself up all day. There's a research study. It's, it's quite interesting, right? That, that proves exactly what you're saying. There, there were 84 women that were working at seven different hotels as part of the housekeeping staff. And they took half of those women and they did a training with them and they basically told them that the movement and the activity that they were doing through the day, and they were cleaning on average about 15 rooms a day. So half of the women got told that what they did in a day constituted exercise, right? They, they showed like 15 minutes of vacuuming, 15 minutes of, you know, changing sheet, all these kinds of things were listed out for them. The other half did not get that information at all and nothing else changed. And I think it was like maybe two, like eight to 12 weeks after when they went back and they looked at some of the metabolic markers that they that they measured pre um, kind of uh, research, that the group that were the informed group that were told that what they were actually doing constituted exercise, they had lost on average two pounds in like the two or three months. Their uh, blood pressure had dropped drastically. Their body fat percentage had dropped. Their um, in work, their engagement in their work being they were more grateful for their job. And so that goes to show that a simple reframe of what we might already be doing, like we believed for so long that we had to get 45 to 60 minutes in for exercise to count, that we, you know, we had to have so many cardio sessions a week, so many. And now we're, we're seeing that simply little bits of nutritious movement throughout our day can give the same amount of benefit as that concentrated time to work out where if you're working out for 45 minutes, but the other hours in the day, we're sitting slumped over, you know, eating at our desk, it kind of negates the checkbox of, oh, I worked out today. Yeah, exactly. And that that's so, so interesting of those women thinking, oh, I'm working out now, you know, uh, but it, it, it totally makes sense. Um, and so let's talk about movement, about optimizing uh, daily movement because you know I have you know read a lot of different research that 
you know, just exercising 10 minutes after each meal or going for a walk for just 10 minutes is much better metabolically than doing a, th- a 30 minute workout by itself, even though it's the same amount of time, which I thought was super interesting. Well, and you're right. And you point to a really important point is that, you know, after a meal, even it's the research shows that even after like 90 minutes after a meal, if you can get that 10 minutes in, because what's happening when we eat, right? Our, you know, our blood glucose will spike because we're taking in this food, we're converting food energy into cellular energy. And depending on, you know, the order you eat your food, like, for example, if you want to optimize that, if you were to eat, you know, a cup of vegetables or a starter salad that is high in fiber and then you might have you know your chicken fettuccine alfredo versus eating the alfredo without a vegetable it is drastically different in the blood glucose spike because of that fiber being front loaded so what we know is that a walk a 10 minute walk within 90 minutes of eating your muscles are actually being able to absorb, like think of your muscles as like little, um, like a moving company that comes in with the boxes to pack your house before you move. Well, there, those muscles are there with boxes to pack up that glucose so that it doesn't get turned into fat. It gets used as energy. And, and that's really metabolic health is the ability of your body because we have two fuel systems. We have sugar as fuel and we have fat as fuel. And for many of us that get these, you know, spikes in, oh my gosh, like I'm shaking, I'm so hangry, right? We are kind of stuck in that sugar as fuel cycle and we never get bumped over to using our fat as fuel. So what we want to, when we start incorporating these simple things like a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar in water 20 minutes before we eat, going for that 10 minute walk after we eat, we are managing that blood glucose spike in a way that is very optimal for our health and, and, and manages that glucose in, in the body. So that's a big one. The other thing people don't realize is that the mitochondria, the little powerhouses of our cells, they're kind of like um, our cell phones. You know, at night we, we make sure one of the things we all make sure our phones are plugged in at night. So when we get up in the morning, we're fully charged, right? Well, our mitochondria are like that and when we get into a cycle where we are fatigued and we choose maybe the couch over that 10 minute walk we are missing an opportunity when we move it's like we're sending our mitochondria a text message to be like hey gang it's time to like boost the energy it's time to give this cell a boost and it's time to give the cell that's a part of this organ or this system a boost so movement and mitochondria have a direct relationship. The more consistent you can be with those 10 minute walks, or like I said earlier, once we've been sitting for an hour, 50% of the blood flow to our legs has decreased. This means that we might feel like the tin man after a heavy rain, right? Like, you know, it takes a few steps to get going. Simply getting up for two minutes every hour will negate that 50% decrease in blood flow. And that's what I mean. You know, sharing this and connecting these dots, Wendy, are important for people because I think for some of us, we've been conditioned to think like, like you said, it's all or nothing. If I can't get in my hour long, what's what's the point? And then, of course, it starts playing with our mindset. Oh, I'm so lazy. Why can't I make myself a priority or I'm off the wagon again? So that's how those two movement and metabolic health are related and why the 10 minute walk is so important. And yeah, and and especially given the the statistic that you notated earlier that 93% of people are metabolically unhealthy. I mean, that is just a shocking statistic and I think it's really important for people to consider getting a continuous glucose monitor and looking at your blood sugar levels, looking and experimenting with the foods that you're eating. And I I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked when I started doing this and seeing what foods really uh, negatively impact my blood sugar, looking at getting on this roller coaster ride and then my blood sugar spiking again while I'm sleeping and then that correlating with me waking up in a bad night's sleep, which screws you for the next day, you know? And it's, it's, and then your blood sugar stays high for 12 hours after a, a refined carb meal or even a meal with a little bit of 
carbs, what you might think is just not that much. And so I think it's uh, really, really helpful to change behavior when you have a little bit of data, like with a continuous glucose monitor, and they're more affordable now. They are. And, you know, the one thing to um, understand, too, is that, and I alluded it to it earlier, but I just want to make sure people understand that your audience understands that sometimes just sim simply changing the order that you eat, like when you eat your fiber first, and then you eat your proteins and your fats, followed up by your carbs. So followed up by your pasta or that, that pizza pizza or pizza, piece of pizza that you like, when you do your fiber, your protein and fat, and then your carb, your blood glucose profile is going to be very different, like even up to 30% lower, simply because of the order that you ate your food in. So, and you know, we're not, we're not told that, right? We're told, here's the standard American diet, or I'm from Canada, here's Canada's food guide. Well, there's actually research that shows that you know, there was a group of people on the standard American diet, and I think it was six weeks after following it to a T, people were less healthy. They had actually gained weight following the standard American diet. And so these, you know, becoming an advocate and a champion for your body through what you're putting in your mouth, the average, our food travels on average 1,500 miles before it gets on our plate. Like that in itself is like, I remember buying some avocado this summer when we were back in Canada and I kid you not, it was three weeks of that bag on, you know, I took them out of the mesh bag, but three weeks later, I still had green avocado and I was like, what have they sprayed on this to stop the natural ripening process? So, you know, starting to question these practices, I think is the first step in like waking up to how can I do things differently for my body in a in a way that is simple and that, that makes good sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I and I think if in, anyone's listening and you're probably listening if you saw metabolism, you know, in the title and you're trying to work on your metabolism, you know, you've got to you gotta track your blood sugar. You you have to, because that can pinpoint a lot of issues for you, food sensitivities and and uh just really can drive change your behavior because you have you have data. And so let's talk about, you know, some practical strategies uh, that you have for, say, uh, you know, putting all of these things into action, your, your, your thoughts, your actions, and your, your bodily processes. For sure. So I have a system that I call my in rituals. And an in ritual is like a superhero's way of thinking about your habits or your patterns, right? So what are those choices that you're making every single day that are going to like be little bulbs on a Christmas tree. So at the end of the day, you know, your Christmas tree is all lit up and it is Eckhart Tolle said, you know, awareness is the first piece or the, or the, the, the biggest agent for change. So bringing these pieces of the puzzle to your awareness. So simple things like going to bed with a glass of water that has some Himalayan sea salt in it. Okay. Um, when you can start your hydration process first thing in the morning, your thirst mechanism is going to be woken up. Water is used in our body. People don't realize this in a priority way. So if you think of it like a pyramid, our brain is at the top of the pyramid. Our vital organs are kind of the center swipe and the bottom are like the tissues of our muscles, bones, joints. And so if we walk around a couple times a week with that low grade headache at the brow line or at the hairline, that actually is a dehydration. Um, you know, that, that's what your body is dealing with. So your brain, instead of being like this juicy grape is actually like a raisin. And if that's the top of the pyramid, and if your brain isn't hydrated, there's no way your vital organs are going to be hydrated. And there's no way that if you're healing from a little bit of a Maybe you have like tennis elbow, a little bit of inflammation or bursitis. There's no way the body can impactfully heal because those cells are at the bottom of the hydration pyramid. So understanding that solid hydration, even simple things like room temperature water versus cold water, your the cell will absorb water at room temperature more optimally than freezing cold water. Uh, when you take that Himalayan sea salt, there's over 84 trace minerals you'll, you're also getting through the cell wall. Sipping versus chugging, totally different from a, from, a, from a hydration perspective. When you can sip one or two ounces every couple of minutes, it's way more impactful 
than you know downing a whole bottle of water because most of that is just going to go right through to the bladder and you're going to you're going to pee it out. So something as simple as starting your day with with water is really really important. And about half your body weight in ounces is just a great rule of thumb for knowing like how much water should I be drinking? So that's a great one, right? Getting out within half an hour of waking up, if you can get into the sunshine, I mean, outside is best, but in front of a big window, if you're, you know, live somewhere where there's seasons and getting outside is challenging to just boost your circadian rhythm, right? If you do live somewhere where you can get your feet on the ground within those first 30 minutes or your hands on a tree or a plant that, you know, that Schumann resident resonance from the earth, mother nature's frequency becomes part of who you are and it's almost like those old school etch-a-sketches where these little things just shake the photo or the image on the etch-a-sketch and just neutralize it and you get to start your day building new you know the brain doesn't discern between success and gratitude so when you can get up and be thankful and verbalize that let your body hear i'm so thankful for you know this for this body for waking up i am so thankful for this man laying beside me that snored all night i'm glad that he is alive right like just and that he slept better so much better than me (laughs) yeah i'm so happy for him (laughs) but you know when you talk about practical i also think that some of these practical in rituals that i mentioned people also tend to discount because they think how can it like how can that really, how can sunshine really impact us like that? And we're returning to more of this, this beautiful, simple way of, of being healthy. Yes, we have all the tech, right? Like you said, we can measure our blood glucose levels at home. We have, you know, we have aura rings and we have whoops and we can tell how long we've been in REM sleep. We, we, we have all these things which are great. And we also need to remember that we have this internal antennae that maybe we've just become disconnected from but it's there's a remembering our body knows our body knows how to be healthy our body knows how to be vital our body knows how to have longevity we just want to nurture it and give it the opportunity to show us because when it's disappointed us in the past when and many of us have had you know the gift of pain given to us it's sometimes hard to to trust it again that it, it can be this vital beautiful machine that serves us until this, until our last breath on this earth. Yes. Yeah. And I think it's so important to get back to the big basics of foundational practices. I think so many people, they think it's gotta be, it's gotta be some, you know, my genetics or do some protocol or I need, you know, a continuous glucose monitor or whatever it is, all this tech that we have. And people think it's going to be something complex when they're not doing the basics, you know, to address their, the root cause of their health issue. And certainly, you know, for me, my daily practice I wake up, I have to drink a liter, liter of water with salt in it before I have my coffee. So, so that's just like my little barrier to entry for my little treat. Yep. And um, and I do, and I have water again. I'm going on my walk in the morning, morning sun, not wearing sunglasses, with getting that sun in my eyes to set my circadian rhythms. So I'm using my entire day to set myself up for a successful sleep. And night, which is going to set the tone for my entire next day, you know, so you make these little investments in yourself. Um, But yeah, doing the the hydration with salt, so important. I can't emphasize the importance of that enough. And you don't taste it after a while. If you taste the salt in it, usually you're, you're mineral deficient. But after you do that for a little while, you don't, you don't taste the salt in it. You're not really putting enough in it to, for it to taste super salty. I love how you set that up. Because what it made me think is you are setting up your days to win your night and then when you win your nights you set up your day so it's this beautiful right almost like infinity sign cycle that you just so beautifully explained i want to give thanks to one of our sponsors ionize me max ionic foot baths so these are the foot baths that i personally use and recommend to all of my patients and if you're looking for an effective way to detox the body that's easy that you can do at home doesn't take any time out of your day and you pull all of these toxins in your body into the water, you want to be doing a foot bath. So these are fantastic to flood ions into your body through the feet and neutralize toxins. And they can help with pain, with fatigue, with brain fog, with weight loss even. 
with swelling. They're great at reducing swelling, getting the lymphatics flowing and giving you liver support by pulling out toxins through the feet and into the water. And they dramatically increase mobilization and flow of toxins into your urine and stool for two to three days after you do the foot bath. So they're not just coming out in the water. Get yours today at healthandmed.com. Yeah, and it's out of desperation, you know, to to sleep and to be healthy, you know, and sometimes, you know, when you fall off the wagon, because say you have stress, which I want to talk about, you know, we all go through periods of stress, we have projects, and it can really throw us off, throw off our sleep, throw off our blood sugar, stress eating and stuff like that. And, you know, when you have a, a period like that, you've got to kind of tighten the reins, you know, to kind of get back to your your baseline or your baseline weight or whatever that is. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now is really getting um, a lot of data and and really fine tuning what it is that I'm doing uh, based on data with my R ring and continuous glucose monitor and really getting more strict about things, uh, strict about sleep, discipline, going to bed early um, so that I can uh, get back to baseline, you know, which is my goal right now. So let's talk about stress and how that impacts our metabolism because I think people don't realize how much stress they're under. I have a lot of a lot of people I talk to or friends and they're like, oh, I'm not stressed. Oh, I don't I don't feel stressed at all. I'm like, I'm happy. And but I, I think people don't realize uh, they don't have to feel stressed to be stressed. And I think that there's a lot of EMF stress, emotional trauma that's largely unconscious, uh, nutritional stress and other uh, other stuff going on. I think people don't realize how much it it impacts them and how they need to shield themselves um, from certain types of stress and people and things like that to uh, to achieve their health goals. Yeah. And I mean, you bring up a really good point is that a lot of this is going to be unconscious or subconscious, right? Because what happens is we are going along, going along, going along. So it's like we're wearing this backpack, right? And then all of a sudden, you know, something happens with one of our parents' health. And it's like, you've just put another backpack or another brick into your backpack. And you're like, oh, that's a bit heavier. But then a couple of days later, you're like, oh, okay, this feels, this feels normal. Right. And then, you know, something else happens and it's like putting another brick. And so we become very conditioned to just continue to put bricks into our backpack until there's a point. And I should say it like this, the, the putting of the bricks into the backpack will always start the body will be in what's called the stress response okay it's like atlas holding the globe over his head we're like i got this right like we are like pushing through it i just kind of push through till next week like even the language we start using like once this month is over i'm golden right like we we say things like that to ourselves that is classic stress response where we are like rallying the troops i got this inside our body right our noradrenaline and our cortisol, so our stress home hormones are supporting that rallying of the troops. But while that's happening, the body is so smart, right? The body is like, all right, there is there is a threat here. You know, she or he is working through this. But while there is a threat, we better start to protect. And that's where we'll start seeing like an inflammatory response. So you might come to, you know, the end of the month and think, Oh my gosh, like, why is my tummy so bloaty? Or why, you know, why all of a sudden does it look like I'm carrying five or seven extra pounds, but we're not connecting the dots to those four extra bricks you just put in your backpack over the past 10 days. We don't, we don't do that. So there, there reaches a point where when we are unable to remind the body or tell the body that the threat has been removed, when, when that doesn't happen, the needle eventually goes from stress response to trauma response, all right? So now we have this beautiful vagus nerve. It's the 10th cranial nerve. It's the only nerve in the body that goes from the brain. It innervates all of our organs. It's like a master switch, right? And when things are going good, things are going good. It's like going down the freeway. But when things are going sideways, it's like being on an old dirt road after a heavy rainstorm. It is muddy. When you flip from the stress to the trauma response, something really important happens in the body. You start to withdraw and retreat because the backpack is just too heavy. You start to disconnect yourself from friends. Um, You start to feel 
different than you, you start to, your behavior changes, you're waving the white flag, right? At that point, the body is like, holy moly, we need way more, you know, call in the help. We need way more army support here. You know, infl inflammation goes way up. Our circadian rhythm gets, you know, yeah, bring in the carbs. Wonky. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yes. Bring in the carbs or you lay in bed at night and your mind spins and spins and then you get mad because you should be sleeping. So, you know, and, and you just continue in this cycle. And so again, you know, the simplicity of knowing that this is what's happening in your body, connecting these dots, you don't have to like have years and years and years of, of training in this. It's just recognizing it in your body. And so something as simple as humming, when you hum, it actually improves the tone of the vagal nerve, right? So the vagus nerve, you know, singing, humming, those are two really important ways to just start to do a little bit of a reset. It's like doing a cold plunge to like kind of do a full nervous system reset when there's a dysregulation, recognizing it first and then doing some of these basic things because you better believe, you know, the carbs are, you know, the infantry is going to be there and it's going to make you feel so good in the moment. Um, then, you know, your blood glucose spikes, you are in this euphoric state, and then the rug gets pulled out from under you, and there is the crash, and therein goes the cycle. So that's really kind of a simple way of understanding how, even unbeknownst to you, this is what's happening in the body from that, that metabolic perspective. Um, again, simply adding that 10 minute walk, getting outside and doing some diaphragmatic breaths. Did you know that when you breathe with your diaphragm, so completely in through your nose and out your mouth with your belly moving like a, a newborn baby, in those moments, you're taking in 600% more oxygen into your cells by simply breathing with your diaphragm, which is that main muscle of respiration. So again, we've been dropping these little nuggets throughout this whole conversation that become those in rituals that it's not like life is never going to have its stressors. It's it, that that's not reality, but do you know what is reality? The ability of you to be confident in what you know about what you're doing every single day to be ready so you can respond to those moments, recognize them. Cause for a lot of us, we don't recognize them until we're way down the path of, um, of that sympathetic fight, flight, freeze. And it takes us longer to return to that parasympathetic. Yeah. And I think a lot of people can go into burnout mo mode and then they essentially, uh, they crash or they go into overwhelm, withdrawing, depression, even. I think depression is a very useful, albeit annoying, um, you know, response to to stress and feeling overwhelmed that it's a it's a protective mechanism that makes you shut down um and and just stop what's what's going on um it's one aspect of it um but i think also a, a, i think what a lot of women do they sabotage themselves they put their body under tremendous amount of stress say if they're working up super early and uh, foregoing sleep and then doing a high intensity cardio workout uh, before they go to work because they're trying to lose weight. I've had so many clients that do that. They don't understand that if you get a really good night's sleep, that is more important than a high cardio workout for weight loss. I think people, they don't understand that you, if you want to lose weight or you want to have a healthy metabolism, you've got to focus on mastering sleep. I almost want to do a course on sleep because I'm so obsessed with sleep and, and, and different tools to improve sleep. I mean, that's, you want metabolic health, you got to learn to sleep. Because if you sleep four or five hours one night, you have the blood sugar levels of a diabetic the next yes. day. Yes. And on this yep. blood sugar roller coaster, you know, stress eating as a result of that. Yeah, you're exactly, yeah, you're exactly right. Yeah. And so let's talk about some of the, um, like some of the indicators, the key indicators that you're on the right track, that you've got your, your mindset and your, your metabolism and your exercise in sync. So when these pieces, when these pillars, they will start to serve you very, very quickly. And how you'll know is because I I talked about it earlier. It's these, it's this conscious choice, right? So I could sit here all day long and this water bottle could stay full. And at the end of the day, I'd be like, oh, shoot, 
I've only had like half of a 500 milliliter water bottle all day long. And so, and, and I can feel that very quickly in my body because the, the more dialed in you are or you get, the quicker you'll notice when you've kind of gone the opposite way. Your body, you're going to feel it and then you're going to see it, right? And I think that's a bit of a, women are looking for the see, right? I want to see the change in my waistline. I want to see, you know, this chicken wing stuff disappear, but if we, the seeing is actually an outcome of the feeling. So when we start feeling different, when our skin starts to get brighter because we've been hydrating, because we've been getting out in the sunshine, because we've been breathing, because maybe you did a swap for that, you know, high intensity interval workout for a long walk or a yoga or a Pilates class, which in your ego mind might be like, we didn't burn any calories. What, what, you know, that was a waste of time, but in the heart and soul mind, it is like, you know, this beautiful way of encouraging the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the rest and digest. That's the communication system we need to bring on track so that it can tell those troops like, Hey, fall back. We're good. Right? Like, look at, there's not as much cortisol. There's not as much noradrenaline. We've got more oxytocin. There's more love. She's right. A 12 second hug. We know it will give us a, a dose of oxytocin, the love hormone. So it's switching the set of lenses that we have from, I need to see a number on a scale. I need to see a number on the waistband of my pants. Those outcomes will happen. I promise you when you focus on the process and the small little wins. Last week I had a woman and what I had her do was create three in rituals every day. So, you know, she picked her hydration. She, uh, prayer and meditation every day was one of her in rituals. And then her 10 minute walk after she went after lunch and after dinner, right? That's what she did. And when we checked in later in the week, she's like, I'm like, I'm up to like 14 in rituals in a day because, she, you know, they just become a part of your lifestyle, right? She, you know, she, she added salt into her water. She started get you know, getting her feet on the ground. Like that's the beautiful um, reality of this is that when this starts to become a part of your lifestyle and you stack it into what you're doing, it doesn't take any more time. Like we all have 1,440 minutes in a day. There's nobody on this planet that has extra hours because of gender or race or how fit they are or how many degrees they have. We all have 1,440 minutes. How we choose to spend those, right? I think there's lots of those 1,440 minutes that get spent doing lots of this. Um, and I'm, you know, I do it too. So I'm not like, I'm not on a soapbox. But sometimes I'll catch myself and I'll be like, you know, in that three minutes, I could have gone and sat on my cooch ball or I could have just, you know, laid on the ground and, and done some some deep breathing. Or I could have used my technology to connect with a friend that I haven't talked to in a long time. Right. So it really is becoming and I think sometimes the word mindful is a bit of an oxymoron. We, we actually want mind emptiness or we want this, we want the space between the thoughts. That's what we want. So I feel like being mindful is starting to understand what, it, what is, do I have space between my thoughts and what's happening in that space? And can it help me to like almost come out of my body and see myself as this fast forward you know, even the language we use, I'm, I'm busy, I'm crazy busy, I'm ridiculously busy. Like we start using different adjectives in front of the action word versus, uh, and my breathwork instructor taught me this. He said, you know what, Jana, bees and beavers are the only two species on the planet that are busy, busy bee, busy beaver. Humans, you can be highly scheduled, right? You can be from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. highly scheduled meetings, picking up kids, all these kinds of things. The difference is the mindset of that. When I'm highly scheduled, I can still be present for every single person that's in front of me, 
versus letting my brain think about, okay, as soon as I get off this with Wendy, then I have to go do that. Then I have to make sure I have enough time to go and, you know, pay that bill and then be back for my two o'clock. That is actually a recipe for disaster. That is that trauma response in the making. And so understanding the simplicity, I'm not saying easy, okay? I'm saying simplicity, and those are two different things, um, but it starts with choice. Yes, yes, and uh, there's so many healthy choices you can make and so many unhealthy choices. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I think when you when you start small and start with those small changes, like you said, choose three per day, and you start having those small wins, you start having more self-respect, as you're like sticking to something that you committed to and that really? starts building on itself when you're you're staying committed to something on a healthy path and just keep adding more and more things like that and that, that's what i do I try, I try to have like a morning routine and just mm-hmm. stick to that and have not have things scheduled in the morning and just hold that space for myself because i think a lot of women uh completely give themselves away um, to all these various things that they're doing in their family and, and their husband and their work and all there's they're being pulled in so many different directions but you have to take space for yourself or you're, you're going you can at some point become ill you know so I think it, it you need to invest in yourself now um no you know so that you have more of yourself to give you know yeah um and so why don't you tell us about your your website you know you have a, a an amazing line of supplements you have a metabolism supplement. Can you talk a little about those? Yeah, for sure. I I actually do. And so I am really proud of this line of supplementation. And I never, you know, even 24 months ago, I never thought that this would be a part of my brand, but I started to learn something that made me draw a line in the sand. So I, I was researching the supplement industry because I'm sure like most people, my supplement cupboard is, I've got two and it's, they're, it's packed. And I remember opening up my cupboard one day and thinking, how did this happen? Like, is my body really benefiting from all these bottles? Because if that's the case, which ones and and how did this all happen? And so when I started researching, I started learning some of the good, the bad, and the ugly of the supplement industry. So first of all, there are some up to 80% is one of the stats that I saw up to 80% of supplements that we purchase do not meet label claims. So we buy these supplements with the best of intentions, right? We trust the people that are selling them. And a lot of people think that the FDA actually is the watchdog that makes sure that these companies, what they say is on the label is what's in the capsule. And that's actually the only thing, now that I'm in the world of supplementation, the only process the FDA is really the watchdog on is in my um, in my fulfillment center, like how I'm actually filling my capsules there's very specific processes we have to go through in accreditation but they really they don't do anything with what is in that capsule so you know that saying like you know when when the god puts people in your place for a reason a season and so i about three years ago i met a gentleman named sean wells sean is known as one of the world's foremost supplement formulators we met at an event in turks and caicos and i reached out to sean about 18 months ago and said listen my community is asking me for solutions for um, extra, like what they feel is unexplained weight gain, energy that is like a roller coaster, um, inflammation, like how do we really start to heal what is causing inflammation so that we can have longevity and, you know, energy and live our very best life. And, and I said, I would want this, if I do this, I want this to be ingredients from Mother Earth. I don't want any fillers that are made in a lab and I want it to be efficacious. Like I want the body to feel different because of this. And so what we did is we created a custom formulation for women. We use the acronym SKNY. So S stands for um, supports healthy blood glucose levels. K is ketogenic friendly N is natural clean ingredients and Y is youth boosting daily formula. So the acronym SKINNY is what we've created. And Sean took some of his like mother nature's best and then really worked to create these ingredients to be metabolically available in the body. So we have something called dihydroberberine, which is the more metabolic or the more um, metabolically available form of berberine, which helps with 
like I said, manage those blood glucose spikes. We put something called tetrahydrocurcumin. Again, the, the very bioavailable version of curcumin to help with inflammation and bloating. Yeah, we I was going to say really... before that yeah. I, I take yeah. berberine. Uh, okay. bef- if I eat some a meal that has some carbohydrates in it, yes. um, I'll take berberine because it blunts that blood sugar response. It's, it's unbelievable. It totally does. Yeah. And you know, the, the difference here, and I obviously want to get some of this in your hands, but for a third of the population, berberine is actually a GI, creates GI distress, either constipation or uh, diarrhea because of the biochemical change that has to happen from berberine to the gut absorbs it as dihydroberberine, and then it goes into our bloodstream as berberine. So what Sean did was he removed one of those biochemical reactions and having it hit the gut as as dihydroberberine for those 33% of the population makes it available for them without the diarrhea or the constipation. And so um, the, you know, the other piece we added was L-ergothionine, which is it's, it is it goes right to our mitochondria. So it's not a cellular support, but it goes deeper. And that's one of the things that I my women will notice first is a stable energy level, which gives them the confidence. And then they start to see the changes. Once we start to manage inflammation, like I had one woman who is a retired nurse, she had major vascular disease. So she sent me photos, Wendy, and honestly, she had no ankles, like her knee to her foot was all the same. It was the same circumference all the way down. She would wear sandals and you would see the imprint of the straps four days into doing two capsules a day before her two biggest meals. So one capsule before her two biggest meals. She sent me the photo of her ankles. She was able to start walking again, like she's completely changed her body. And so that's what the Bloom Better, like, When I drew my line in the sand um, and threw my hat in the ring in this industry that is very crowded and very noisy, what I'm doing now is working to navigate and find, you know, the beating hearts, the women in this community, in this world that are looking for something that is natural, that can support them. I mean, we, we hear the horror stories of you know, what's happening with these semiglutide drugs and women so desperately just wanting a body, like they're just craving this body and they're willing to put, you know, these different versions of um, like reptile venom into their body to like freeze their digestive tract. And when we have something from mother nature and berberine, as an example, it's been used in Ayurvedic medicine for 2000 years, right? Yeah, and it has the same mechanism as metformin. It, it works exactly. on the same mechanism. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So that, that controls blood that sugar. Really, yes. yes. Anyone doesn't yeah, know what that is. Yeah, and you know what? It's it's sugar. Like we've been told for so long, like salt, 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 bad, bad, bad. But it's actually like salt is what creates the electricity in our cells. We need salt. It's actually the sugar that has been leading us down this, you know, windy road to, you know, I saw a reel on Instagram that showed like, colic in a baby, sugar, ADHD in a toddler, sugar, um, you know, even dementia and Alzheimer's in, you know, in an older adult, sugar, like there's this culprit that's kind of been masked and off to the side where when we start to understand that, yes, of course, we're going to have changes in our hormones as we get into perimenopause and menopause. And yes, there's all these other things, but, um, I've really, you know, become like I am on a mission to help women and men understand that this is, these are choices. Um, you know, metabolism isn't something that we think we have a, a high metabolism or fast metabolism when we're young. And as we age, it gets slow. Metabolism simply is the body's ability to take energy from food and create it to cellular energy. So it shouldn't matter what age you are, if you're sleeping good, like all these things we've just talked about, that's what contributes to metabolism and we should not be just sitting back and accepting the fact that well there was another candle on my birthday cake so I should expect these aches these pains this extra weight this you know lack of sleep it's just not the case I just want to take a minute to give a shout out to one of our sponsors true energy skincare I absolutely love true energy skincare I've been using it for a couple of years and I've noticed a dramatic improvement in my skin texture 
and it's so soft and supple. It's super healthy. This is one of my secret weapons because not only are you getting lots of healthy, natural ingredients, moisturizing, hydration um, in the the true energy skincare, but the inventor of this, Kathy Goldstein, also infuses thousands of frequencies into the skincare to dramatically improve collagen production and you know, so many other benefits, uh, you know, in regards to all these different frequencies that are infused into the skincare. Yeah. And I, I think a big part of your controlling your blood sugar also is avoiding industrial seed oils because they will, the, the, the soy, the corn, the canola, and the, you know, the very, very volatile uh, seed oils like sunflower and things like that, they're using processed food, fast food. Those uh, create a barrier to cellular metabolism and therefore insulin sensitivity as well. So I think that that really needs to be factored in because I think a lot of people don't don't always have to eat less carbohydrates. They they should for a while until their metabolism is fixed, but at the industrial seed oils really throw a big wrench into that into that insulin sensitivity as well. Well, I think how many times do you hear like, you know, when I travel, I, I go to Italy and I eat the bread and the pasta and I am totally fine and I'm, you know, and I, and I have a gluten sensitivity, but here in North America, it's totally different. And you're right. It's because of all these, you know, these hidden processing, um, well, processes that have, and, and, and what else has been added to that grocery list of, of ingredients. So uh, you know, it's, it's, it's shifting the conversation. It's, you know, cheering each other on it's having these quick wins that might seem like nothing in the moment but you know a moment plus a moment plus a moment that's how momentum starts and it becomes it becomes positively infectious because people will start to notice the energy and the frequency that you're letting off you know as you're radiating um that's pretty inspiring yeah and i'm you know and i'm all for i i think because so many people have problems with their metabolism, you you need to be taking certain supplements. And like like berberine, I take berberine. I do the apple cider vinegar uh, before I have a, hard car, car, a high carbohydrate meal. And there's lots of other supplements like you you mentioned, ingredients that can be really, really, uh, um, can be a big game changer to improving your metabolism and th- in removing certain foods. So thank you so much for coming on the show and kind of just laying that groundwork for these foundational things that we have to have in place to improve our metabolism. Because you have to start thinking about this. Uh, No matter what age you are, you're in your 20s or 30s or 40s or 50s, 60s, it doesn't matter what age you are. You know, the the stat is that 93% of people have an issue with your metabolism. So you need to have a game. uh, You need to have a, a, a game plan in place to prevent metabolic issues and to fix them and identify them. So thanks for for giving us some really good tools. So why don't you tell us what your website is? Yeah, you can find me at bloombetter.life or on any of the socials, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, uh, at Jana with one N, J-A-N-A dot Danielson. And um, yeah, just elevating our wellness, it shouldn't be a dream, right? It, it is very simple to take that one first step that creates this spark. And I hope there's something in our conversation today that has resonated with you. Because when information resonates, it, it means that there's something in your soul that's been like, oh, what, what, can we start doing that? Or can we start living that? Because once we start living it, it becomes our body wisdom. And that's really what this is all about is getting reconnected to that innate divine wisdom that we have within us we just gotta you know kind of clean away a little bit of the cobwebs and some of the dust but it's there yes well jana thank you so much for coming on the myers detox podcast and everyone thanks so much for joining me today i'm dr wendy myers and uh, i do this show because i want to help you give give you those little pieces of the puzzle that will help you elevate your health and maybe that one little thing that you're missing that you need to be doing Uh, You can discover that on this show. So thanks for tuning in every week where I bring experts around the world uh, talking about heavy metal and chemical detoxification, health issues caused by different uh, toxins and chemicals. We also talk about anti-aging, bioenergetics, and more advanced topics in health. So thanks for tuning in. The Myers Detox Podcast is created and hosted by Wendy Myers. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. 
This podcast, including Wendy Myers and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician. Thank you.